In 1928, Gloria Farley was a young girl with a big passion for exploration. She grew up in the town of Heavener, Oklahoma, and loved to visit local parks. One day, she found a weird-looking stone that had some bizarre symbols on it. Her fascination with the mysterious writings continued to grow. So, two decades later, she returned to study them and made a whole career out of it. See these weird drawings that Gloria stumbled upon back then? They're officially called runes, and they were a system of writing used by Vikings, an ancient Scandinavian people. The word rune itself translates to secret word or secret letter. Runes were made up of different symbols, each representing a different sound or concept. These symbols were carved into stone or wood and were often used for inscriptions and messages. As an important part of Viking culture, they were used everywhere, from spiritual texts to everyday communication. Why are these writings so interesting in the first place? Firstly, because there is no official text that explains the history or creation of the Viking runes. Some Vikings engraved runes onto the trunk of a tree named Yggdrasil. It was a mythical tree in Norse mythology. It was believed to connect the nine realms of the universe. It's described as a huge ash tree with branches that reach out to all corners of the world. The tree is often depicted with three main roots, one on Earth, one more extending into the underworld, and the last one reaching the realm of spirits. It's a symbol of the connection between things and the cyclical nature of life. But this is just folklore. In reality, the origin of runes has not been officially determined yet. Many people even question whether Vikings originally used runes, mostly because they think Vikings acquired their knowledge of runes during their travels. We know that Vikings traveled to many different places throughout their history. They started in Scandinavia, then went on to visit the rest of Europe, including the British Isles, France, Germany, and Italy. Some even reached the northern parts of Africa and certain regions of Central Asia, going as far as the Caspian Sea and the Black Sea. But there's another theory about Vikings and their travels that continues to baffle historians. Did Vikings actually discover America? Well, for starters, America was not discovered by anyone. The landmass of North and South America had been inhabited by indigenous peoples for thousands of years before the arrival of European explorers. But the first known European to reach the Americas was Christopher Columbus, who arrived at the Bahamas in 1492. So why do some people believe Vikings might have gotten there first? We have to travel back to the 19th century, when the idea that the Norse were the first Europeans to discover America took off. This belief was based on runes and Norse artifacts found in different areas in the U.S. That cobblestone path, first discovered by Gloria Farley, located in Heavener Runestone Park in Oklahoma, seems to tell the same story. To this day, this slab is one of the biggest historical mysteries in the U.S. Some believe that the runes on the stone were carved by Norse explorers in 1000 CE. At one point in her career, Gloria even reached out to the Smithsonian Institution and found out that they had already concluded in 1923 that the symbols had indeed been from a Scandinavian language. They translated to Nomedal, or Nome and Dal, which in turn translated to Sundial Valley, or Monument Valley. This information answered the question of what language the symbols belonged to but left two other questions unanswered. Who carved the symbols, and when were they carved? During her professional life, Gloria collaborated with specialists in Norse history, geology, and epigraphy. She collected evidence that backed up her theory that Vikings had explored North America and could have easily navigated shallow rivers and creeks in their longboats. Though it may seem unlikely, it's not impossible that Vikings once sailed down the Mississippi River. In fact, 
Viking rune stones have been found in various places all over North America, including Minnesota and Maine. In Oklahoma, researchers have discovered six of these rune stones in total, though their validity is still uncertain. One Norse settlement, Lancey Aux Meadows in Canada, has been confirmed to date back to 1021 CE. This supports the idea of the Viking activity in North America during the estimated period of time of the Hevener runestone. The Hevener runestone's age cannot be determined through traditional scientific methods like carbon dating or organic material decay rate analysis. Therefore, researchers started to look for other evidence like Viking artifacts or any other signs of their activity in the area. But none has been found to this day. That's why Vikings really visiting Oklahoma is a subject still up for debate. We can't finish our story about the Viking runes without mentioning the Futhark, which is a 16-letter alphabet. It was the basis for the earliest runic inscriptions that date back to around 200 BCE. At that time, the alphabet consisted of 24 letters. By 800 BCE, the number of letters was reduced to 16. The use of runes continued until the Middle Ages. Inscriptions on stone and wood were made with regular runes, while a different version of the alphabet was used for everyday messages on wood or bone. Runes were also commonly used on objects like combs to identify the owner. In the Viking culture, runes were used to honor brave fighters and heroes on memorial stones, such as the famous Gelling Stone in Jutland, Denmark. These stones were placed in public areas for all to see and had a big impact on the local culture. Runes weren't the only interesting part of the Viking heritage. Contrary to popular belief, Vikings were actually known for their cleanliness. Excavations of Viking sites have revealed that they had access to grooming tools such as tweezers, razors, combs, and ear cleaners. Additionally, they were known to bathe regularly often taking advantage of natural hot springs for their hygiene routine. This was in stark contrast to the hygiene habits of other Europeans at the time. They also had a knack for winter sports, which is not surprising given the Scandinavian weather. At least 6,000 years ago, Scandinavians created primitive skis, though it's believed that Asians may have invented them earlier. During the Viking Age, Norse people used skis for transportation, and also for fun. They even had a spirit protector of skiing named Ullr, who was revered by Vikings. Vikings even had their own beauty standards, which were very important to them. Viking men who were not naturally blonde would use a strong soap with a high lye content to lighten their hair and conform to their culture's beauty standards. In some cases, beards were also lightened. These treatments may have also helped with another delicate issue of the time, that of head lice. Vikings were also known for their powerful ships, which were crucial to their expansion strategy. Their most commonly used boats were long boats, which could carry up to 60 people and were designed for easy docking and departure. Viking ships were typically made of wood, with the hull constructed using overlapping planks held together by iron rivets. The ships were powered by both sails and oars and were often decorated with intricate carvings and animal figureheads. The reasons behind Vikings traveling almost everywhere in the world are not well understood. One theory suggests that their raiding trips were a result of limited opportunities in Scandinavia including a lack of farmland and the practice of fathers leaving all their property to their oldest son. This left younger sons with no inheritance and no chance of finding land on their own, making them go on Viking explorations. Another theory is that there was an imbalance in the population of Scandinavia, with too many men and not enough women. This may have led Vikings to not only go searching for foreign treasures, but also to attract women as wives during their travels.